channel. It's Ruben Lewis. It's about 7.50 a.m. on a Sunday. We are gonna dive in. We're gonna hear all about MCIT, what that process looked like for me, and uh, just I'll probably share some insights into what I wanna do next with the degree. But first video on YouTube, filming this with an iPhone, so I apologize for the mid quality. All right, y'all, two quick things. One, learning to talk to the camera confidently is a hard thing. It is a learned skill. So shout out to all my YouTubers who do this regularly. Oh, I got some eye goop right here. Let me get that. Let me get that. Good call, YouTube. Good call. Two, Austin weather is crazy. Last week was in the high 80s, mid 80s, I should say. Today, actually starting on Friday, there was a thunderstorm that dropped the temperature 40 degrees. Now I'm out here wearing a beanie like it's winter time, even though it's November. But I guess I'd rather have this type of weather than hot and humid weather, which we had last week. I digress. It's golden hour, baby. It's golden hour. You still had to put on some gloves. I'm just not used to this 38 degree weather, whatever it is outside. All right, story time. You guys wanna hear how I got into UPenn? I'll go ahead and share. But before I get there, a little bit about my background. I got a business degree from the University of Texas at Austin. And at the time, didn't quite know what I wanted to do with it, but it was a marketing specialty. And I finished my senior capstone in the digital marketing class. And I thought it would have been awesome to step into digital marketing at some point, uh, doing Google Analytics, Google Ads, things like that. Just seemed fun. And my capstone professor said the best way to learn how to be a marketer is to step into sales. So I actually took my first job in technical sales, selling IT data center infrastructure, which maybe that's not that sexy to you. I didn't think it was sexy at all, but I fell into it and it ended up being really fun and interesting. And that's what kind of started my transition into the awareness of IT. And then from IT hardware, I got interested in software. And that led me to want to explore options on software engineering specifically. And I was thinking about how, how should I best learn to code, to program? And I could be, there, there's a multitude of ways. You've seen boot camps, you could be self-taught. Of course, you could have the formal route and pursue a degree. And I knew that coding is hard. I had already dabbled a little bit in some different books or projects, but to hold yourself accountable, it's tough. As you may know, if you're a student, that is the best way. If you're being measured and you have tests and quizzes, homework, it's the best way for you to actually do your work. Or it's easy to lose motivation and not care. So I started thinking about what my options were. And I, of course, saw all the multitude of computer science, business information technology, management information system degrees, both all three at all three levels, honestly, at the associate level, at the bachelor's level, and the master's level. And I considered all the options. In fact, I, I would literally swipe through Google, swipe, 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 looking for different degree options and whatnot. And eventually I came across the UPenn one. In fact, it was actually one of the top searches so it's called the Masters of Computer Information Technology, or MCIT for short, that is um, ran by the University of Pennsylvania. And it's a master's program, which one caught my eye and I thought that was cool, considering I already have my bachelor's degree. I definitely considered going to a community college and just knocking out an associate's degree and getting that done for a fraction of the cost and that probably would have been my backup option uh, of course i looked at bachelor's degrees but for the cost of it, it just didn't seem worth it to me i would be willing to do an associates because i could probably get away going to the local community college here for a few thousand dollars or pursue a master's if it's the right program in the right school because in some ways uh, brand name somewhat matters i don't know F feel free to leave a comment if you think it does and their application process is fairly straightforward you had to get two letters of recommendation had to write a statement of purpose and they gave you a preset list of questions that they want you to answer and then you turn in your transcript your resume 
think that's everything. GRE GMAT optional if you don't have any quantitative courses or background on your transcript. You should, you could, you could take the GRE or the GMAT just to showcase that you got some math skills because part of computer, computer science literally is math. So I put together all that, the whole application checklist did everything that I needed to do. But how did I even get all that together? I had already been introduced to the IT world and I started to dabble into what that meant for computer science. And I started learning more about systems administration uh, specifically. And then I realized how effective Python was in automating different tasks in the IT realm. And I started hearing about softwares like Ansible, Jenkins, Puppet, didn't know how to do any of that stuff, but I was in at least interested. And of course, if you're familiar, there's something called DevOps, developer, operations, which is the mix of the developer role and literally IT operations. So think server engineer, storage engineer. So that caught my eye. And I think I wanted to learn how to step into a career like that. Granted, I could probably have just learned it all on my own. Popped out a few Udemy courses and Coursera and whatnot and learned some of the skills. I actually have done that. So I started doing that first. Um, I started doing different online courses through LinkedIn Learning, through Udemy, through Coursera, and building a foundation of knowledge for first DevOps. Well, I actually started with Python first because Python seems it's the most human readable language, as they say. Also okay. Geared towards children and PhDs. Okay. And automate everything. I actually think it's the most popular language at this time computer science language at this time not just normal language right it's a computer science talk <laughs> but i learned python first took some online courses i can give you a quick tutorial i just learned that on udemy uh, on medium uh just an hour ago that's uh just finish those make sure i got a lot of hands-on repetitions and, and ides and whatnot it was crazy though because the hardest thing about getting started is installing the software. I had no idea I had to install all these packages, install Python, get the environment stood up to actually start coding. I get find a IDE, which stands for Interactive Developer Environment, like VS Code, Virtual Studio Code, things like that, or PyCharm. Insert whatever IDE you wanna use. I didn't realize how hard it was to get that stood up, and that was one of the biggest barriers for me when I first got started. Started doing those courses, found a book, Automate the Boring Stuff by Al Stugart. That's a great read. Um, ooh, had a little, had a little runny nose action. Huh? To my first intro to Python, and I started reading that, getting comfortable with the foundational knowledge of Python, and simultaneously started working on different projects, easy, easy programs. I don't know, doing Hangman or uh, a guess my number game against the computer running in my terminal. And recently I just started trying to build a web app with the Django framework. So based on all the things that I had did, I was able to include that in my statement of purpose for, for MCIT. And I guess they viewed that somewhat favorably. Also an important thing to know is that I read this book. I think it's literally a book called how to craft a winning statement for MCIT, something like that. I don't know. I'll find the link and, and put it in the description below. But some author, some author, I should know his name, but he literally wrote a novel about how to craft the best MCIT statement. So I guess he had, he himself went through MCIT and put together a statement of purpose and got in and wanted to share his wisdom with other people. And in fact, he, I think he ended up being a consultant, like a graduate application consultant and helping people put packages together. And so he's seen a lot, done a lot. I actually was able to get a free trial on Amazon because I'm cheap. And I cranked out that statement of purpose in about a week or two, as long as my free trial lasted. And honestly, that, that was the, the game changer. I thought I was a decent writer, but the hardest thing about writing is structure. You have to know how to structure your paper accordingly. So I did that, put together a statement of purpose, asked some of my leadership at my current job for letters of recommendation. And I had a decent transcript. You know, I went to the business school and it did require some quantitative classes like statistics one and two, calculus one and two. And I took a marketing analytics class 
So I learned a few things like SPSS statistics and R, which I don't remember anything about R. R is used for data analysis and statistics, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about it. So definitely had a, a few things I could kind of talk about. Uh, but again, through to the nature of my job and talking to IT engineers fairly regularly and doing some of those additional coursework, I was able to put something together. That kind of completes my process. I, I don't did a lot of research, stalking people on LinkedIn. That's just what you got to do these days. Looking up keywords, trying to find out what who were my competitors or other applicants, what kind of backgrounds they had. Because I want to see, could I be a worthy candidate to get into the program? I did all that and I just had to wait. And I got the little email in October saying, woo, congrats, you got in. I was super excited. Okay, we're back to sitting down now. Next, you're probably wondering what I want to do with the MCIT. I think I hit on it a little bit earlier. DevOps was something that interests me. So working with containerized workloads, Kubernetes, replatforming virtual machine workloads and turning it into a container. That's what containerization is. And of course, looking for ways to automate IT tasks such as, I don't know, IP address management, for example, or sending some type of configuration change out to everything in your environment. That's things that DevOps does. And I thought that was pretty fascinating. It also seems pretty cool to me working with infrastructure, being a site reliability engineer, all these different terms for, in some ways, keeping the lights on for a business. That's cool. That's that's not a, that I don't think a lot of people want to do that. I think web development front end is pretty hot right now. And of course, I don't mind learning skills like that. In fact, with the application I'm building, I've been touching CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, uh, and Bootstrap, of course. But it's cool to know. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll be full stack or something. Uh, I know that was a, a hot thing at one point. Not sure if it's still relevant. It's kind of what I'm thinking. What I want to do. It might take me a while to get there, though. I think it's gonna take me three years to do this program. I'm I'm, I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna be working full time while I do this. I love my wife, so I want to spend time with her. I love playing basketball. I uh, go to my church and hang out with my church friends. I definitely don't want to miss out on different moments in my life just to get lost in this computer science degree. This is this is a, a fair start. This is the beginning. And I would, I'll love, I'll definitely document my journey through MCIT with you guys here. Um, you'll see on YouTube, you'll see my struggles. You'll see if I can complete the program because I don't even know if I'll finish. Uh, hopefully I do. But that's it. But otherwise that. I guess I'll see you in the next video.